Okay, here I am with Andre Charlin, Brian LaRue, the phone gap. Hey, can you say some nice stuff about us? We are, yes, absolutely. <laughs> and we are live from Adobe Max, and I have heard the phone gap is the hottest thing here, and that everybody cares about developers. It's, what do you have uh, to say to that? I'd say phone gap is Adobe's best kept secret. Brian? <laughs> yeah, man, we love the shit out of developers. We love developers. Sure. Now, what do we have to do to get the entire company to believe that? So, here. <laughs> this year's Max definitely was about creatives. Yes. And what Adobe is trying to do is bring uh, the creative cloud to the forefront of everyone's mind. Meanwhile, uh, phone gap community is killing it. And we totally have the developer community figured out. That, that part isn't the issue at all. I, I think the designer community is the one that's looking for some guidance on how to approach the mobile web. The mobile web. Mobile apps. And apps. All right. So what do we have to do to get the designer community and the developer community to interact more closely? Now that we've done that, what, what do we have to do to get the designer community and the developer community to interact more closely? So, my opinion... <laughs> <laughs> Just like that, right there. Yeah, so, are you going to use this footage? Maybe. <laughs> the blog. Yeah. So, I, you know, they're, they're not different people, right? Like, uh, people build apps with all varying skill sets. It's not like some dude's like, oh, I know Photoshop and I, I'm never going to build an app. There's more people that are like, oh, I build apps and I'm never going to open Photoshop. It turns out there's a spectrum of users. And uh, when you, you design your products and, and initiatives around, like, single persona, you're, you're targeting stereotypes. And which means that you're probably going to design mediocre solutions. We're not about that. Um, in, the, in the phone gap team and philosophy, we've always been about solving problems that people have and solving the shit out of it and then moving on to the next one. Right now, I think we've, we've hit a good sweet spot for the development community and the next thing we have to figure out is, is how to get it up a level to the design community. Not to high code, not to have visual design tools, just like make it better for designers and teach them to be better developers. But the, the question is, right, how does the craft beer we're drinking right here tie into what you guys are doing with Phone Gap? Craftsman. Craftsman enjoys beer and Phone Gap. Craftsman, craft beer, similar route now. That must be something that we can talk about. Uh, we all phone Gap and beer go hand in hand, really. Untapped being the, yeah. the story. I mean, why do you feel like developers appreciate a good beer? Yeah, that's like a universal thing. Uh, not Almost. Totally. Same. Yeah, I know. Some of us. Drink and that's that ties into exactly what we were talking about with the user stories, right? Yep. Oh, you want it to be universal, but it's not. You don't want to stereotype you talk. Right? Oh, okay. oh, right. Many developers do appreciate a good beer. Many also like cider. Yeah. Well, some don't some. even drink. That's fine. Some do not drink. It's true. Shazrin, uh, who's basically from Gap iOS, doesn't drink. But he drink. finds all of us super entertaining. Yeah, he laughs at us. Yeah, <laughs> 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 there's a couple of beers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. There is a, a developer beer thing. I mean, beer is delicious, so uh, if you like it, then that makes sense. If you don't, then whatever. There's something for everyone in this world. Maybe you like uh, cocktails and martinis. Maybe maybe uh, you don't drink it all. Maybe you like water or something. I don't know. Water's cool. I <laughs> like, you, know, you, know, you know, beer is like a, I'll call it social lubricant, right? And software industry, you know, benefits from collaboration. The problem is, a lot of young men who have trouble chatting until they have a few beers. And the truth comes up. Look, look my, my sense is the connection between beer and development is craft, right? Yeah. As, as people who care about their work and they see their work not as engineering but as art. You know, engineering yeah. seems to be something that's like found down an assembly line, but art is something that's created by craft people who are not. Not fungible resources, right? Yes. You can't just replace one developer with another. Yeah, yeah, it's not a goddamn assembly line. It is like craft. But the thing that I engineering is not necessarily assembly line either, right? Like some of the coolest shit out there has been created by engineers. Just creative engineers. Wrenches, cool cars, <laughs> iPhones. Like you know, yeah, it yeah, takes yeah. a certain amount of technical skill before you can become really creative. 
Yep. So I think breaking down those technical skills, like breaking down the barriers, breaking them into small, isolated problems that people can solve, you can learn one bit at a time, right? Learn a bit of HTML, learn a bit of CSS, gateway drug, a bit of JavaScript. Next thing you know, we have designers who can implement the things they want to see, and I think yes. that's it. Right. It's a big thing. We're trying to, you know, just make it easier, kind of step by step, right? Solve the hard problems first, and then kind of keep, just keep going down the ladder. Right. So, how does Fungat create enough constraints to embrace the creativity of developers? Well, it's just web languages, right? So, HTML and JavaScript are easy to learn, right? But they're, you know, also limited in some ways. 